The next stage of having, you know, stripped off, you know, the insulation from the naked wire would be to wire up, you know, a 240 volt uh, mains three point plug. I will need a thick wire that fits right into the mains plug, but I wouldn't need it to be extensively long. And so I would have to trim the wire short. If you've got your three pin already inserted into your plug, you know, that's fine. But if you haven't, you can insert them into the original positions into two so that's the longest bit there just make sure it's flush you know um, when it sits into that socket or slot so if it's standing further up you know twist it around or spin it around and you know slide it back in, into the slot it should be flush there okay and that's pretty much your earth pin sorted you know you've got two other shorter pins to insert you know the shorter pin on the left is your neutral C is shorter than the um, earth pin, okay? And also, when inserting, make sure, you know, it's um, flush, okay? Both the um, earth pin and the um, neutral pin, okay? If it's standing outwardly, twist it around and insert it back into the slot, make sure it's flush. You can see N stands for neutral, E stands for earth, and L on the right-hand side stands for live, okay? The live pin, you know, is attached to a 13 amp fuse, okay? So... When your plug blows out as a result of a short circuit, sometimes all you need to do is just to change the fuse after fixing your device from the resultant short circuit. So if you've got an old plug that's got a 13 amp fuse, you could insert it and that should um, resolve the problem, okay? If you've got a blown out fuse, but basically this is your live pin, okay? And so your earth wire, you know, comes in a green and yellow um, color denoted by E on the plug and goes at the top, topmost part, okay? The shot up pin on the left is your neutral and comes in black or blue. And whilst, you know, the pin on the right is also a shot up pin and comes in a red or brown and that's your live um, wire, okay? And sometimes, you know, if the inscriptions are not evident, you can always work out what wires go, goes where by using logic to remember that your blue and black neutral wires have got L as the second letter and should be on the left hand side as opposed to in contrast to your live wires which are brown or red which have got you know the letter R in them and should be on the right hand side okay which essentially are your live wires so basically i will be rewiring you know the plug here if you haven't got you know enough space for your thick wire to go in you know open up the knots there and once you've got your wires um sliding through which in this case is your earth wire tighten you know the knot back onto the pin repeat the same process for the neutral wire which is your blue wire here it goes on the left hand pin which is one of them shot up pins you know you, you can push the, push the the pin out you know open up the knot if there isn't enough space you know chuck the wire in and screw the the knot back onto the pin okay repeat the same process for the live wire which is your red wire okay screw down the knot you know onto the pin and you know if you haven't got enough traction with the screwdriver change the screwdriver to a bigger one and you know make sure that you top tighten or hand tighten you know the screws onto the pins once you have established that all of the knots have been tightened onto the pins, the next step would be to um, safeguard, you know, the flex on the wire. So basically securing the sheath and making sure that, you know, um, when you yank, you know, the wire or the, or the plug that, you know, it doesn't just, you know, pull on, pull on straight onto the um, pins. And so we will be screwing, you know, a black plastic on the underside um, with two screws to secure, you know, the wire. Um, into position or the flex so basically tucking them two screws through the back of the plug through the plastic to secure the sheath onto the plug you know in between um, the black plastic and the plug sort of like mesh it there but pretty much safeguard it from moving back and forth the next step of the process would be to make sure that the wires are sat in the plug properly so that you can close out, you know, the cover of the plug. And, you know, also just to make sure that, you know, you can separate them as, as distinctly as possible. So that if, if there's a melt or a short circuit in the plug that both wires, when they melt, don't touch each other. But in this case, I can't really do it because um, the wires are sort of like long, okay? So the best I could do here is just make sure that they're sitting, you know, properly in the in the plug, okay? Shouldn't be a problem. I've got insulation in there to protect the naked wires from um, rubbing or touching each other and thereby causing a short circuit. 
So now basically I'll just be, you know, coupling the plug back together, you know, torque tightening um, the bigger knot, you know, onto the front and the back side of the plug. And your device or appliance is ready to use. And just remember that, you know, when you get your plug into the socket, because you've twisted your plug around, your live is on the left and your neutral is on the right hand side on the socket itself, okay? Especially if, if you're into fault finding and you're sticking, you know, live and neutral wires without the earth, you know, into your socket. Remember, you should be using a 13 amp fuse to help with short circuits, search protection and spikes, okay? So if for testing purposes you decide to use naked wires, be very careful. Don't mix up, you know, live and neutral. Do not try it with naked wires if you're not certified. Always use the recommended plug with the, with the um, fuse in there, okay, for, for your safety, okay? And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share, helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.